After intercepting a shipment of nerve gas intended for terrorists, Agent Ethan Hunt boards an aircraft with the package, determined to stop it from falling into the wrong hands. With his colleagues Benji and Luther remotely guiding him, Ethan manages to secure the dangerous cargo and parachute it safely off the plane. This mission, though successful, is just the beginning of a more significant challenge ahead. Ethan has been hunting the elusive syndicate, an international criminal organization that appears to be a shadow network, inciting chaos and terror worldwide. The Impossible Mission Force, IMF, has grown increasingly skeptical of the Syndicate's existence, viewing it as a fabrication of Ethan's overactive imagination. Despite their doubts, Ethan is convinced that the Syndicate is real and is determined to bring it down. For over a year, he has been tracking their movements, piecing together clues that suggest they are behind several global crises and terror attacks. Ethan's belief is reinforced when he reports to an IMF substation to receive his next orders, only to find himself captured by Solomon Lane a mysterious man who has been orchestrating these events. Lane traps Ethan in a gas chamber, leaving him to die. Ethan narrowly escapes with the help of Ilsa Faust, a disavowed MI6 agent who appears to be working for the syndicate, but whose true loyalties are unclear. Together, they manage to flee, but Ethan is left with more questions than answers about the syndicate's plans and Ilsa's role. Back in the United States, tensions are brewing within the intelligence community. CIA Director Alan Hunley and IMF Agent William Brand appear before a Senate Oversight Committee to discuss the future of the IMF. Hunley argues that the IMF's reckless methods, including bombings and near catastrophes, have caused more harm than good. He is determined to have the IMF disbanded and absorb into the CIA, boasting that Ethan Hunt will be captured within 24 hours. Brand, on the other hand, defends the IMF, citing its long history of preventing global disasters and maintaining peace. However, the committee sides with Hunley, seeing the IMF's operations as indistinguishable from luck, and votes to shut it down. With the IMF disbanded, Ethan is left on his own. Cut off from his support network, he has only one lead, a blonde man in glasses who was present when he was captured in London. Ethan believes this man is connected to the syndicate, though his identity remains unknown. Hunley, dismissing Ethan's warnings, tells Brandt that the syndicate is a figment of Ethan's imagination, created to justify the IMF's existence. Brandt is skeptical, but has no choice but to comply with Hunley's orders to find Ethan and bring him in. Six months pass, and Ethan is still on the run, eluding capture while continuing his pursuit of the syndicate. During this time, he has uncovered more about the organization, identifying government agents of various nationalities who were declared dead but are secretly working for the syndicate. These agents are linked to numerous global incidents, including financial disasters, accidents, and acts of terrorism. Despite the dangers, Ethan is determined to expose the syndicate and bring them to justice. Realizing he cannot do this alone, Ethan reaches out to his former colleague Benji Dunn. Knowing Benji's skills with technology and surveillance, Ethan arranges for him to attend the opera Tarandit in Vienna, where Ethan's suspects Lane will make an appearance. At the opera, Benji scans the security feeds while Ethan prowls the venue, looking for potential threats. They soon realize the Austrian Chancellor, who is attending the opera, is the target of an assassination plot. As Ethan moves through the backstage area, he encounters an assassin wearing an eye camera, which is transmitting images to Solomon Lane. Ethan quickly subdues the assassin and takes his gun. At the same time, he spots Ilsa Faust, who is also backstage, positioning herself to take a shot at the Chancellor. Ethan is torn between his desire to trust Ilsa and the need to stop the assassination. When a third shooter emerges, Ethan makes a split-second decision to fire at the Chancellor, hitting him in the shoulder to save his life. The chaos that ensues is both a success and a failure. Although Ethan and Benji manage to stop the shooters, the Chancellor is killed by a car bomb as he is being rushed to safety. Ethan helps Ilsa escape the scene, but the encounter leaves him with more questions about her true allegiance. Ilsa reveals that saving Ethan in London put her in a precarious position, and she had to take the Vienna job to regain her employer's trust. However, she remains tight-lipped about who her employer is, leaving Ethan to wonder if she is friend or foe. Meanwhile, Lane is growing impatient. He confronts Ilsa about her failure to eliminate Ethan and her apparent betrayal by helping him escape. Ilsa informs Lane that Ethan has discovered a lead in Morocco, but she is careful not to reveal too much. Lane is suspicious but allows her to continue her mission, warning her that failure will not be tolerated. Determined to follow the lead Ilsa provided, Ethan and Benji travel to Morocco. There, they learn that Lane's syndicate has a secure server hidden in an underwater facility beneath a power station. This server supposedly contains a ledger with the names of all syndicate operatives, which could be the key to dismantling the organization. However, accessing the server is no easy task. It is protected by state-of-the-art security, including biometric scans and a liquid-cooled underwater chamber that holds the data. Knowing they need help, Ethan contacts William Brandt, 
who recruits former IMF agent Luther Stickle. Together, they devise a plan to infiltrate the facility and steal the data. Ilsa meets them in Morocco, revealing that the ledger was stolen by one of Lane's operatives, who was killed for his betrayal. The data is now locked in the underwater server, and only someone with preloaded access can retrieve it. Ethan realizes that he will have to go underwater to access the server and retrieve the ledger. The heist begins, with Ethan diving into the underwater chamber to access the server while Benji monitors from above. The mission quickly takes a dangerous turn when Ethan is unable to complete the task before his air supply runs out. As he struggles to unlock the data, he loses consciousness, drowning in the chamber. In a desperate move, Ilsa dies in to save him, reviving Ethan just in time. With the data in hand, the team makes a quick escape, but Ilsa takes the drive from Benji and flees on a motorcycle. Ethan, Benji, and the team pursue Ilsa, racing through the streets of Morocco. As they close in, they are ambushed by syndicate operatives, leading to a high-speed chase. Despite their efforts, Ilsa manages to escape, leaving Ethan and his team empty-handed. Benji reveals that he made a copy of the data before Ilsa took the drive, giving them a crucial advantage. Ilsa returns to London, hoping to pass the stolen data to her MI6 handler, Atlee. However, Atlee reveals that the drive contains an encrypted British government red box used to transport state secrets, requiring the Prime Minister's biometrics to unlock. He compels Ilsa to return to the syndicate to complete her mission, reminding her that only a few people know her true identity as an undercover British agent. Ilsa realizes that Atlee may have his own agenda, and that she is a pawn in a larger game. When Ilsa meets Lane, she discovers that Atlee has wiped the drive, leaving her with nothing to offer Lane. Lane is furious, believing Ilsa has betrayed him. He orders her to authenticate the ledger with him, planning to use it to access billions in currency. Meanwhile, Ethan and his team realize Lane's next move will be to kidnap the British Prime Minister to unlock the red box. Ethan knows he must act quickly to prevent Lane from gaining access to the funds and using them to further the syndicate's plans. Ilsa reaches out to Ethan, warning him of Lane's intentions and offering to help. She confesses that she was forced into the syndicate and has been trying to find a way out. Ethan is torn, unsure if he can trust Ilsa, but he knows he has no other choice. Together, they devise a plan to lure Lane into the open and take him down once and for all. As Ethan prepares for the final confrontation, he realizes that his actions have led to this moment. The syndicate has been a shadow over his life, and now he has the chance to end it. With Ilsa's help, Ethan sets the trap, using himself as bait to draw Lane out. The plan is risky, but it is their only shot at stopping the syndicate and restoring the IMF. The stage is set for the final showdown. Ethan, Ilsa, Benji, and the team head to a charity auction in London, where they believe Lane will make his move. As the auction begins, they keep a close watch on the Prime Minister, knowing Lane will attempt to kidnap him to unlock the red box. The tension is high as Ethan and his team prepare for the inevitable confrontation. Disguised as Atlee, Ethan manages to get close to the Prime Minister and confirms the existence of the Syndicate, learning that it was initially a classified project meant to perform covert missions without oversight. However, the Prime Minister reveals that he ordered the project cancelled before it could be implemented, deeming it too dangerous. Ethan realizes that Lane hijacked the project and turned it into the Syndicate, using it for his own gain. The real Atlee arrives, and Ethan subdues him, forcing him to admit his role in covering up the Syndicate's existence. With the truth out in the open, Ethan is finally able to convince CIA Director Hunley of the Syndicate's reality. Hunley, seeing the evidence, agrees to help bring Lane down and restore the IMF. Lane's men capture Benji and threaten to kill him unless Ethan hands over the decrypted data. Ethan, knowing that Lane will never stop, decides to take a bold step. He destroys the data and tells Lane that he has memorized it, forcing Lane to confront him directly. The trap is set, and Lane falls right into it. In a tense chase through the streets of London, Ethan and Ilsa are pursued by Lane's operatives. They split up, with Ethan leading Lane into a series of tunnels. As Lane closes in, Ethan activates a hidden mechanism, trapping Lane in a bulletproof cell. The tables are turned, and Lane finds himself gassed, just as he had done to Ethan at the start of their confrontation. With Lane captured and the syndicate exposed, the IMF is reinstated. Brandt congratulates Hunley on his new role as the IMF secretary acknowledging that his efforts to disband the IMF were part of a larger plan to allow Ethan to operate undercover. The Oversight Committee, though skeptical, approves the reinstatement, recognizing the need for the IMF's unique approach to global threats.